So when we start to look at patients who walk in our door at my institute in particular, and we start to look at those with locally advanced disease, not amenable to surgical resection, or patients with metastatic disease that are felt to be not curable with surgical resection, then we have to look at chemotherapy as a standard of care approach. At our institute, we tend to use as a first-line therapy adriamycin with olaratumab based on the phase two and one B data, which was very impressive with respect to an overall survival advantage. If we didn't have the availability of olaratumab previous to that, we were using adriamycin as a standard of care first-line agent. However, there are certain histological subtypes that perhaps would benefit from the addition of iphosphamide. There has been some thought maybe certain patients would benefit from gemcitabine and taxotere as a first-line agent. However, some data would suggest that that's more toxic than doxorubicin single agent, and therefore, in my institute, mostly what we're going to is a doxorubicin-based first-line therapy, usually in combination with olaratumab. So I think the most recent advance our field has actually surprisingly hit upon is a monoclonal antibody. That a monoclonal antibody is to the plate with the right growth factor receptor, and its name is olaratumab. And this is a molecule that I've been involved with since its very beginning. It's an ex exciting uh, drug that actually was used in combination with doxorubicin. And as the frontline mainstay drug, uh, finding a partner that it works with doxorubicin besides ifosamide is highly exciting. So I think a lot of people are curious what alertumab is going to do into the paradigm of how we're going to treat soft tissue sarcoma. I think part of this is going to come from the recent Lanson paper with how we did the original phase 1-2 trial. It was a randomized phase 2 where doxorubicin was used with alertumab in combination. And then he took any patient that was, getting, that was anthracycline naive. And so as long as you hadn't had an anthracycline, adding this to it seemed to give approximately a year overall survival benefit. And so where I think this drug is first going to come into play is in any metastatic patient that you're going to give a doxyrubicin to. And so what we've seen is if you compare this to, say, the Judson trial where we looked at overall survival with adriamycin and ifosamide, this one stands out because we're over a year greater in the metastatic setting. I think there's still going to be a bit of an appropriateness to when to use adriamycin and ifosamide if we're going for some sort of curative intent where we need shrinkage. But I think the mainstay anthracycline treatment will be used in combination with olaritumab. So the recent FDA approval of olaritumab, I think, uh, is paradigm shifting for the treatment of soft tissue sarcoma. For the better part of for decades, uh, we have been relying on anthracycline-based chemotherapy um, as sort of the backbone. Uh, and while a lot of agents have been combined uh, with anthracyclines to try to improve outcomes up until the data from olaritumab in combination with doxorubicin, uh, the trials have largely been negative. Uh, I think with the, uh, with the approval of olaritumab in combination with doxorubicin, uh, and importantly, the improvement in survival that was seen uh, in the phase two study, I think that combination will quickly uh, supplant single agent therapy uh, in, the, in the, the treatment of patients with soft tissue sarcoma um, who are appropriate for anthracycline based chemotherapy. So the availability of alertumab um, has great implication on how we, tr how we treat um, metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. And it may also become more relevant as, as well in bone sarcoma, but that's still being studied. Really, I think it depends in large part on how the phase three study comes out. And if it, uh, um, if it corroborates the, the data we see from the phase two, which has been extremely exciting, um, it will change how we approach, in general, the treatment of metastatic disease. Um, there's been a long argument of how aggressively to treat these uh, with multiple different trials, um, and more recently an ERTC study looking at AIM, which is a combination of doxorubicin plus another drug called ifosamide, compared to doxorubicin alone. And uh, that combination, while it did increase the progression-free survival, did not affect uh, significantly the overall survival. This is really uh, one of the few drugs now that we've seen in soft tissue sarcoma that actually has dramatically increased the overall survival benefit, and, uh, and uh, something we haven't seen before. So. I am very excited about the drug, but I still want to make sure that we can corroborate that evidence with the phase three blinded study. So uh, alaritumab is a monoclonal antibody that targets a protein known as PDGFR alpha, also known as platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha. Uh, and PDGFR uh, is a uh, transmembrane tyrosine kinase receptor. It sits on the surface uh, of cells. 
uh, and um, uh, binding of ligand to the receptor results in uh, activation of the receptor uh, and signaling uh, through the receptor into the cell for growth signals. Um, the target is an attractive one uh, in cancer in part because there's increasing recognition that uh, many tumor cells, uh, and in fact the cells surrounding the tumor in, in what's called the, the tumor microenvironment or the stroma, actually overexpress PDGFR. Uh, and so the strategy of targeting a protein that drives the growth signals of, of tumor cells uh, is an attractive one. The FDA label for this is, will be within combination with an anthracycline. It doesn't necessarily have a line of therapy. There's certain uh, soft tissues or comas that a lot of medical oncologists have a preference for a different first line therapy. And so when you go to use doxorubicin, this should be used in combination with it. So more specifically, I think the label really does state that it's for use for any soft tissue sarcoma for which doxorubicin is appropriate and in use in combination for eight cycles with doxorubicin followed by maintenance, which is an important part of you know, the efficacy of this drug where it's then used as monotherapy. So uh, alaritumab recently received FDA approval for the treatment of soft tissue sarcoma uh, that is not amenable to surgery nor radiation therapy and for whom uh, treatment with an anthracycline-based chemotherapy backbone is appropriate. The dosing schedule uh, in the phase two study was uh, 15, milligrams per mil 15 milligrams per kilogram administered intravenously on day one and eight of a 21-day cycle. So the appropriate dosing for this in the first line setting or even in the second and third line setting is uh, to give uh, doxorubicin on day one of uh, every 21-day cycle at uh, 75 milligrams per meter squared um, and it's typically given as a push over 15 minutes. Uh, Oleritumab in the prior studies has actually been given first, typically within that regimen, to watch for any potential reactions. Uh, and that's given um, at uh, 15 milligrams per kilogram on days one and day eight uh, over one hour.